Good evening, and welcome to the exciting world of Excel. In this tutorial, I will show you how to construct a basic graph, how to update that graph with new information, as well as how to change some features of the graph, such like adding access labels and whatnot. If at any time you have any questions, feel free to raise your hand, and I will answer the questions the order in which they were asked. So to get started here, I'm going to go ahead and add some data. We're going to keep along the themes of oral reading fluency. And I'm going to mark this correct. By putting the data label in this top position, I'm able to put the, my actual numbers right below it. And essentially treats this column as the x-axis. And the data will line up in the path that we set. Let's go ahead and add a column for incorrect or errors. I'm just going to add a few data points here. And finally, I am going to add a column for aim line. We're going to leave this alone for now. We'll come back to this. So the first thing to do in constructing this graph is to select the information that will be included in the graph. So go ahead drag, um, click and drag so that you get all the information you want. We're going to go to insert, select line graph. Most of the graphs we use in behavior analysis and education will be line graphs. And we want to select the graph with the line markers. We do not want this one. We want the one with markers. Now Excel does a lot of the work for you. Hopefully you've got something that looks something like this. This is pretty close to what we need. We just have to change a few things. I don't like these lines. They're called grid lines. So I'm just going to click them. I'm going to delete them. They're gone. So what I have right here is a data path showing an increasing trend in correct words and a decreasing trend. Now, you notice that the phases or the axes are not labeled. That's something we need to change. Let's do that now. By clicking on Layout and then Axis Titles, one for below the axis, one for horizontal, we're able to essentially call this what we will. I'm going to call this sessions. This will say response per minute. Exciting. This is looking a little bit closer to what we need. If I want to change the font, the size, I can simply click on the thing that I want to change, go to home, and just increase or decrease the font as I see fit. I'm going to make this all 12. I'll increase this as well. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. Now this is pretty close. What we're missing at this point, however, is the aim line. So let's go ahead and put that in. What you'll notice is that when I have the graph selected, I see this blue box around the data indicating what is included in the graph and what is not. By moving this thing around, I could either take information out or add information in. And this is essentially what we're going to do to construct the aim line. So let's set the starting point of our aim line at an average of these two sessions. We'll say 12.5. And let's set a rather ambitious goal of 100. Now you'll notice that information is not automatically added to the graph. What we'll do is select the graph so that we get this box. Click and drag as to include the new information. And you'll see that two more data points appear. Now because nothing is easy in Excel, um, you'll notice the line connecting these two things is not there automatically. We need to go put that in. To do that, simply right click on any part of the graph, hit the select data button. In this box, there's a number of advanced features. I may visit these on another tutorial, but we don't need to worry about them right now. What we want to do is tell Excel how we want to handle hidden and empty cells. We're going to click on this. And essentially, we want to treat empty cells as if they weren't there, and we want the line to be connected. So we're going to click Connect Data Points with Line, hit OK, hit OK, 
And there we go. Now we can leave the legend in there, we can take the legend out. And essentially what this shows us is, for all intents and purposes right now, um, a pretty good depiction of where the student is in relation to where we want them to be. Now in other tutorials, I'll teach you how to change this session, how to have it not necessarily treat every cell like a number. Again, we'll get to that at some other time. Now, the last thing we might want to do is incorporate this graph in either PowerPoint or Word. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. First thing we need to do is copy this graph. So if it's not selected, first thing we need to do is select it. I like to right click and just hit copy. We are then going to open up the program in which we want to deposit this graph. Get rid of this, get rid of this. Now, if you are copying and pasting from a Word file, I'm sorry, from an Excel file to a Word file, the new file will treat it as an Excel document. This, this could be good, but this could also create some problems. I like to copy things into other documents as pictures. To do that, you can right click if you have a newer version of PowerPoint or Word, and you can select picture. In this way, you don't need to worry about changing things, messing things up, or crashing your computer. Now, if you don't have that option, what you might have is something like this, where you can select paste. You might have these icons pop up. Again, just select that icon. If not, you need to go to paste special, select JPEG, and you could paste it in as a picture file. This makes it a lot easier to use and manipulate in the document once you're done with the graph. Now, once it's, once it's set up as a picture, you can't change it or adjust it. You need to copy it in again, but it's a fairly easy process. So that ends this tutorial. I hope you found it enlightening, awe-inspiring, and I hope you get out there and, and save the world with Excel. Have a great evening.